The 2012 IGCC is available now. It contains 11 chapters plus a chapter on reference standards and four adoptable appendices. Within this document is a series of regulations addressing materials, air and water quality, energy conservation, site and land use, and commissioning. An innovation in this code is contained in Chapter 3, which features 20 optional jurisdictional requirements that allow a jurisdiction to customize their code at the level they wish to achieve if they want to go beyond the baseline objectives of the IGCC. In addition, where Appendix A is adopted, 39 project electives are available that allow project designers flexibility while simultaneously encouraging and recognizing building performance that exceeds the minimum requirements in the body of the IGCC. The flexibility of the code, combined with the integration with the family of I-codes, provides a unique and serviceable set of regulations for communities of all sizes and economies. Let's take a short walk through the highlights of the IGCC. Chapter 1 is entitled Administration. The scope of the code, much like the International Building Code, includes all commercial buildings. Most residential buildings are also covered, but residential buildings under the scope of the International Residential Code, Group R3 buildings and Group R2 and R4 buildings less than four stories are not. However, the IGCC provides jurisdictions with options to regulate those residential buildings with the ICC 700 National Green Building Standard. For all buildings except low-rise residential buildings three stories in height or less, the code also allows owners and designers to comply with ASHRAE USGBC IES Standard 189.1 .1, Standard for the Design of High-Performance Green Buildings in lieu of compliance with Chapters 2 through 11 of the IGCC. The intent of the code includes conservation of natural resources, materials, water, and energy the employment of renewable energy technologies, improved outdoor and indoor air quality, and an emphasis on linkage to building operations and maintenance. The IGCC functions as an overlay to the family of I-codes, relying on many of the administrative requirements of other I-codes, such as the IBC. Chapter 2 is entitled Definitions. It ensures a common understanding of the many terms that may be new to users of the code. Chapter 3 is entitled Jurisdictional Requirements and Life Cycle Assessment. In this chapter, we see the menu of jurisdictional requirements that allow jurisdictions to draft their versions of the IGCC to meet their specific needs. Specific choices include optional jurisdictional requirements that reflect priorities related to sustainability, including the ability to prohibit construction in flood conservation or agricultural areas or certain greenfield sites. Jurisdictions can also opt to include requirements related to high-occupancy low-emission vehicle parking, light pollution, and landscape irrigation, as well as increase various IGCC baseline minimum requirements, such as energy efficiency thresholds. Chapter 4 is entitled Site Development and Land Use. This chapter addresses how a building can positively impact the land it occupies, as well as reduce the negative consequences that its presence may have on existing natural resources. Specific sections address preservation of natural resources, including surface water, agriculture, vegetation, and topsoil. Chapter 4 also addresses stormwater management, landscape irrigation and water quality protection, erosion control and soil management, flood hazard area building limitations, Transportation impacts, including provisions related to walkways and bicycle paths. HOV low emission. Hybrid electric vehicle parking. Heat island mitigation using site paving. Reduced solar reflectance of roofing materials. Building shading and vegetative roofs. And site lighting provisions that limit backlight, glare, and uplight. Chapter 5 is entitled, Material Resource Conservation and Efficiency. This chapter acknowledges the need to regulate how building construction and operation uses materials and addresses waste. Specific sections include material and waste management, including recycling or salvage of construction waste and recycling of post-occupancy waste. 
properties of materials used in construction, including setting a minimum percentage of used, recycled, recyclable, bio-based and indigenous materials that must be used in buildings, limitations on the mercury content of fluorescent lamps, and requirements for moisture control and material storage and handling. Chapter 6 is entitled Energy Conservation, Efficiency, and Carbon Dioxide Equivalent Emission Reduction. This chapter contains the most content of any within the IGCC and is a reflection of the advanced degree of information available on this topic, as well as the desire to fully integrate with and build upon the International Energy Conservation Code, the IECC. Specific sections included in this chapter are modeled performance pathway requirements, energy metering, monitoring and reporting, automated demand response infrastructure, building envelope systems, building mechanical systems, building service water heating systems, building electrical power and lighting systems, specific appliances and equipment, building renewable energy systems, and energy systems commissioning and completion. Both prescriptive and performance-based compliant paths are provided. This chapter also includes comprehensive provisions for calculating annual energy and CO2 emissions based on region-specific effectiveness and CO2 emissions rates that have been substantiated by data from utility operations. Chapter 7 is entitled, Water Conservation Quality and Efficiency. The water conservation sections specifically mandates approximately 20% reduced potable water flow rates for fixtures and fittings as compared to those in the IPC. More specifics include hot water distribution efficiency, consumption limits for HVAC systems, efficiency requirements for water treatment systems, ornamental fountain and water feature potable water usage, non-potable water use and application, and detailed requirements for rainwater, graywater, and reclaimed water system. Chapter 8 is entitled Indoor Environmental Quality and Comfort. Specific sections address air handling system access and filters, operations and maintenance relative to indoor quality management and air handling system efficacy, asbestos and urea formaldehyde foam insulation use prevention, material emissions and pollutant control, including limitation of chemical emissions from materials and systems, venting of fireplaces and fuel-fired appliances, HVA systems, including prohibition of smoking in buildings and pollutant isolation, sound transmission limits for interior, exterior, and high noise or sound sensitive locations, and day lighting. Chapter 9 is entitled Commissioning Operation and Maintenance. This chapter is critical to linking design elements and systems functions with overall building performance. Approval from code officials is not mandated for post-occupancy commissioning. To assist with code enforcement, this chapter contains a comprehensive table which is based on IBC Chapter 17 Structural Tests and Special Inspections. It identifies all commissioning requirements and cross-references detailed commissioning requirements to specific other IGCC chapters. Specific sections include both pre- and post-occupancy requirements. Although post-occupancy reports must be filed with code official, review and approval of the reports is not required. Building operations and maintenance documents must be prepared and submitted to the building manuals for both operations and owners. The reports and operations and maintenance documents are intended to provide building owners and facilities maintenance staff with valuable information that they may use as they see fit. Chapter 10 is entitled Existing Buildings. Sections in this chapter address additions, alterations, and changes of occupancy. It also provides jurisdictions with an option to offer the complete evaluation of existing buildings for compliance with the IGCC on a voluntary basis. This allows owners of existing buildings that may have been designed to address environmental concerns to remain competitive with newly constructed green buildings. In addition, Chapter 10 contains building demolition requirements, exemptions for historic buildings, 
and an option that allows jurisdictions to require energy performance and carbon dioxide equivalent emissions reporting for existing buildings. Chapter 11 is entitled Existing Building Site Development. The sections in this chapter mirror Chapter 10, Existing Buildings, with the provisions being specific to only the site and not the building itself. Chapter 12 is entitled Referenced Standards. The IGCC utilizes the same format as all the I codes, with the last chapter of the code used to identify the promulgator, title, and edition year of the standards referenced in the code. IGCC appendices apply only when specifically adopted by the jurisdiction. The appendices address the following topics project electives, rate on mitigation, an optional adopting ordinance, and post certificate of occupancy enforcement procedures. Appendix A provides 39 project electives that go beyond the minimum mandatory requirements of the IGCC to encourage and recognize the implementation of green practices that are otherwise difficult to mandate, such as the development of brownfield and infield sites and encouraging and recognizing higher levels of building performance, including energy performance. Although the minimum number of project electives is determined by the jurisdiction, the building owner and design professional select which particular provisions to implement on each project over 50 electives. The 2012 IGCC is available now. Please join us in providing the best information for greener communities. The IGCC, safe and sustainable by the book.